Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what falls to, or what fails to satisfy. Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ, 
Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew Glory to you, Lord. when jesus heard of the death of john the baptist he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself the crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns when he disembarked and saw the vast crowd his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in my inconsequential opinion, the words that you heard from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans are some of the most powerful words in the entire New Testament. When Paul says to us that nothing in this world can separate us from the love of Christ, that this love of Jesus Christ is so powerful that nothing that anguish and distress, persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword, none of these things can separate us 
from a God who loves us so much that he despises, literally despises separation from us. We always have that confidence. We always have that comfort that God never wants to be separated from us. And of course, you and I know that it is sin that separates us from God, but that's our choice. It's never about God and what God is doing, but it's, but it's about what we have decided to do in our lives. And so the responsibility is given to us through the gift of freedom, that you and I are free to accept or reject God. Now that may sound somewhat harsh, but when you think of it, isn't it wonderful that we were created free? Isn't it wonderful that we can make the choice? How often you hear people say, he or she's not going to tell me what to do. We reject that. And very often, we reject it in mean and violent ways. Someone else trying to tell us what to do. Well, God doesn't try to coerce us or control us, but God invites us. He invites us to know him, love him, and serve him. And it's truly an invitation, <clears throat> truly an invitation. In this passage from Matthew's gospel that we heard today, Jesus' heart was moved with pity because he looked on these people and they were hungry hungry not just for physical food, but they were hungry for meaning in their lives. They were hungry to know what God had in store for them. They, they recognized that God's love is beyond our ability to imagine. And so they wanted to know. They wanted to know. And whenever we want to know, whenever we express that desire to God, God will always reward us with the gift of that knowledge. You and I, of course, as Catholic Christians, live in a sacramental church. We live in a church that celebrates seven sacraments. And most of us learned many, many years ago that a sacrament is a sensible sign instituted by Christ to give grace. So it's something we know with our senses. We can see it and feel it and hear it and smell it and taste it. And it is something we can identify. It's something also that contains God's life, his friendship, his presence, his power, the power that binds us to him. And that was the power that St. Paul was talking about when he asks that question, what will separate us from the love of Christ? What will separate us from grace? Well, in the sacraments, we receive the grace to be in communion with God. We receive the grace to be bound to God. And thus, we experience that security, that comfort, that love, that wholeness, and especially 
to experience wholeness, when, when everything seems right, when you know who you are and you know who God is and you know what you have to do and you want to do it, that's a satisfied heart. And that's what happens here in this passage from Matthew's Gospel where the crowd is hungry, they want to know God, they want to serve God, they want to do the right thing. And Jesus says to his disciples, we have what they need. They don't have to leave here. We have what they need. The disciples, of course, don't immediately recognize what that means. And in fact, they're negative and cynical. Oh, we only have five loaves and two fish. But what Jesus was pointing to was the fact that even with five loaves and two fish, they had the ability to invoke God's presence, the grace of the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. Because in the Eucharist, bread and wine become the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. In Eucharist, we receive in a special way, in a unique way, in a direct way, in a substantial way, the power, the grace, the presence of Jesus. We have to remember that we have what we need in our relationship with the church. Yes, the church is imperfect. Yes, people in the church sin. But that does not separate us from receiving pure grace in the sacraments. And that is the unique feature of being Catholic, that we can have this bond, this relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in sacramental ways, in sacred signs that contain what they point to. So my brothers and sisters, it is by God's mercy, his love, and his desire that all people be saved, that we are given the gift of the sacraments. One of the challenges that many of us in church leadership are dealing with at this time is how to bring people back to the regular worship life of the church, to bring people back into our churches to celebrate the Eucharist, to stay safe, yet to also know that we can't just stay out there, we can't just stay home when it comes to Christ in the celebration of the sacraments. That these, by their very nature, were instituted by God himself to be social, to be interactive, to be human beings commingling their lives, expressing their community, expressing that community that you and I call the body of Christ on earth, the church. And so there are many challenges, as you know. It's not easy. And we are going to continue to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to find safe ways in appropriate ways to express ourselves as church, to express ourselves in such a way that five loaves and two fish can become enough for many, can become enough to nourish, sustain, and save the body of Christ on earth, you 
and me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, confident that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, we offer our prayers and our petitions to our Heavenly Father through Christ our Savior. For the church throughout the world, especially where Christians are persecuted and denied religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil officials, that they may one day learn to work together for the common good, for the progress of peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, who need God's healing presence today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For those who have died, our brothers and our sisters, whom we commend to God's everlasting mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. That God will call young people to heroic service in the church, as priests and religious, as lay evangelists, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the places on earth where there is war, violence, and civil unrest, especially for an end of violence in our American cities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all our men and women in the military throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nurses and physicians, for therapists, for all who work in health care, that they may be free of disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your people. In your mercy, grant what we need today to experience salvation and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, glorious martyrs, Blessed Cecilia, Blessed Mary Ann, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't forget Coffee Talk on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. On the website or on Facebook, you'll find the link. Join us for that Zoom session of varying types of topics and it's always kind of interesting and thought-provoking and it's just good to get together. Also, we are safely attending Mass on the weekend, our normal schedule, 4 p.m. on Saturday at St. Cecilia Building, 8 a.m. on Sunday morning at Our Lady of Peace Building, and 10 a.m. at St. Cecilia Building. Please join us and know that it's safe and everyone is wearing a mask. We're sanitizing. The buildings are being sanitized. So it's very safe for you to come back to the sacraments. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. for joining us for Mass at St. Mary Ann Cope Parish. We are so grateful you choose to worship with us. If you enjoyed this liturgy, please give today. You can mail your offering to the parish office or drop it in our secure locked mailbox at St. Mary Ann Cope Parish, 105 Stanton Avenue, Salve, New York, 13209. You can also give online by visiting St. MaryAnnCope.org backslash give. We thank you for your support.